Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And Brussels has warned Spain that it could lose up to 5 billion euros of European recovery money if it doesn't speed things up. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon, as always for your continuing support. Now, let's get into the news, and as I said, Brussels has spoken, and apparently they are not happy because Spain is not using the EU recovery funds fast enough. And as we can see here, Brussels warned Spain could lose 5 billion euros due to Treasury slowness with funds. The government runs the risk of losing at least 5 billion euros in structural and cohesion funds due to the slowness with which it is processing them, according to European Commission sources consulted by this newspaper. The problem is that Spain is particularly slow in presenting a proposal for a partnership agreement for the 2021 to 2027 funds and the programs it wants to be financed. According to the sources consulted, the alarm bells were set off when it became known that the timetable of the Ministry of Finance is the end of the third quarter of 2022 for the presentation of projects for these funds. This was revealed, as reported by this newspaper on Monday, by the Director General for Regional and Urban Policy of the European Commission, Marc Lemaitre, who considered this pace very regrettable. The European Commission points out that submitting projects by the end of September 2022, when they have been eligible since January 2021, is not only a slower pace than other member states, but also leaves La Matriz team no time to evaluate them and give their approval before the end of the year. And according to EU regulation, if these projects are not approved before January 2023, Spain would lose an annuity, they stress. So Spain at risk of losing up to 5 billion euros in European aid because they're too slow getting the projects up and running. So another example of how bureaucracy and government work here in Spain very, very slowly indeed. And if the European Commission is telling you that you are slow, you've got a serious problem. Now, British newspaper, The Times, has gone with who they think could be the next Prime Minister of this country. And according to The Times, it could be communist Yolanda Díaz. The chances of Spain electing a woman as Prime Minister for the first time have rocketed after the rapid ascent of a communist leader who was squaring off against an equally fast-rising conservative star. Until two years ago, Yolanda Díaz was little known, but her performance since she became a deputy Prime Minister of Spain's socialist-led coalition government in July has led pundits to describe her as a future rival of Isabel Díaz Ayuso for the top job. Adoration for Ayuso, 43, soared among conservatives after she won a resounding victory in a Madrid regional election in May, rattling Pedro Sánchez, the Prime Minister, and laying the ground for a power struggle with the leader of her own People's Party, PP. So, there we go. Fairly clear according to the Times newspaper, Spain's next Prime Minister is either going to be communist Yolanda Díaz or conservative Isabel Díaz Ayuso. And for people in the comments section that are going to criticise me for using the word communist to describe Ms. Díaz, Talk to the Times, not me. Now, the economic crisis caused by the coronavirus pandemic has left a lot of Spanish companies vulnerable to takeover. But the other day, the government announced that it is extending foreign takeover curbs to help aid recovery. Spain on Tuesday approved a year-long extension until the end of 2022 to restrictions on foreign takeovers of Spanish companies it regards as strategic. As part of measures to protect Spanish firms in the face of the coronavirus pandemic, Madrid imposed the process of authorization for the acquisition by a foreign company of stakes larger than 10% in companies considered to be strategic. The decision to extend the potential veto comes after US firm KKR offered to buy Telecom Italia for 10.8 billion euros in what would be Europe's biggest private equity buyout. It's a question of providing legal certainty and continuing to support companies so that they can progress in economic recovery, government spokesperson Teresa Rodriguez told a press briefing after a weekly cabinet meeting. The extension applies to listed and unlisted companies if a potential investment exceeds 500 million euros, Spain's economy ministry said in a statement. So all of those corporate vultures circling around Spanish companies won't be able to get their hands on them 
until the end of 2022, as the government doesn't want these strategic assets falling into foreign hands. Now, the leaders of some of Spain's depopulated autonomous communities have got together because they're worried about the impact that the new political party España Baciada will have in their autonomous communities. And as we can see here, leaders of depopulated Spain call for more money to curb new cantonalist and populist movements. Santiago de Compostela was the pilgrimage route for politicians seeking consensus on Tuesday. Some regional presidents were confused in the afternoon with the pilgrims in the cathedral under the gaze of the apostle. Perhaps they were asking that their prayers for regional funding to prioritise the demographic emergency be heard by the government. Eight communities from three different political parties, the G8 of depopulated Spain, joined forces to reject economic and social privileges to the nationalists and, incidentally, to be on guard against the advance of rural platforms that threaten the PP and the PSOE with an electoral bite in the next elections. Galicia, PP, Castilla Leon, PP, Cantabria, PRC, Asturias, PSOE, Aragon, PSOE, La Rioja, PSOE, Castilla-La Mancha, PSOE, and Extremadura, PSOE, met to seal a pact that put puts pressure on the Treasury to prioritise the criterion of the effective cost of service provision in the new regional funding model. So the leaders of some of Spain's more depopulated autonomous communities, Galicia, Cantabria, Castilla y León, to name just a few, worry that new political parties like España Baciada are populist movements that are going to take seats away from the traditional parties. And what do they want to help fight off these populist movements? More cash. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation and we can see that accumulated incidence rate now creeping up to 139.10. There are 3,004 COVID patients hospitalized around the country and there are 547 COVID patients currently in ICU. Now we saw a couple of weeks ago that Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez said that he was going to put an end to prostitution here in Spain, and the Justice Minister yesterday reiterated those words and pledged in the medium term to eradicate prostitution in Spain. The days of prostitution are numbered, she said. The Minister of Justice, Pilar Yop, has pledged in the medium term to fight the battle to put an end to prostitution in Spain, an idea that is one of the PSOE's commitments included in the report of the party's 40th Congress. This was made clear on Tuesday during her appearance before the Senate Justice Committee. I am convinced that the days of prostitution in our country are numbered. The sexual freedom bill is already pointing in that direction, Yop stressed. According to her, if there is something that sustains prostitution, if there are two sides of the same coin that sustain this slavery, it is pimping and the clients. So according to the Justice Minister, the days of prostitution here in Spain, the world's oldest profession apparently, are numbered. Good luck with that. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from yesterday's video. One here from Debbie, love your daily updates, Stu. For us wanting to do the Camino and the flux of certain areas of Spain threatening a COVID passport, how can non-Spanish natives prove it? Being on the Camino with not being allowed to enter restaurants or lodging just won't do. Please advise. Thank you. Yeah, Debbie, thanks for the question. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure of the answer. I'm not sure what the solution would be if you can't get your hands on a COVID passport. The whole COVID passport situation here in Spain is a bit difficult to understand, unfortunately. Some autonomous communities have it in place and others don't. And according to which Camino route you do, you'll either need one or you won't. However, I think the best thing to do if you are double vaccinated would be to get some type of proof of that vaccination. And if you can't, you'll most likely have to do some type of PCR test or rapid antigen test, which you can buy from pharmacies here in Spain. But again, if anybody in the community has more information on this topic, please let us know in the comment section below. Want to hear from Jane? Boris Johnson took his son to Peppa Pig World at the weekend. He is allowed a day off with his son now and again. Yeah, Jane, thanks for the comment. And I don't think anybody's criticizing Boris Johnson for taking a day off and taking the family to Peppa Pig World. I think the criticism comes because he forgot what he was talking about and started talking absolute drivel. One here from Marcus, that's surely one of the bigger political gaffes, Pablo, old mate. I can only imagine one of his family suddenly realizing the fascist symbology, a look of total horror, and a frantic whisper in Pablo's ear. Exit stage left rapidly. Yeah, Marcus, thanks for the comment and referring to an article that we saw yesterday about how the opposition leader here in Spain, Pablo Casado, from the PP party, attended mass in a church in Granada last Saturday at the same time they were holding a memorial service for the ex-dictator Francisco Franco because it was the anniversary of his death. And of course, a lot of people are asking the question, was it an honest mistake 
or did he go there deliberately? People from the PP party have jumped to Casado's defence and said that it was a mistake, but of course the left-wing political parties here in Spain are going to have an absolute field day with this story, because they're always looking to link the PP with the dictatorship, and when things like this happen, it gives them plenty of ammunition. One here from Bill, I've read in a couple of places that Spanish attitudes toward Franco and his era are complicated, so much so that foreigners should avoid the subject at all costs, would you agree? Yeah, Bill, thanks for the comment, and I would agree that Franco and his era are still a touchy subject here in Spain, a complicated subject for foreigners to talk about, and it's still a topic that is very divisive here among Spaniards. So my advice would be to be very careful if you do bring the subject up, and make sure that you know the people that you are talking to well. And if you don't know them well, talk about the weather. One here from Julian, healthcare here in Spain is expensive. Businesses pay for it in every nomina and autonomo payment, and it's way higher than in the US private health care. Yeah, Julian, thanks for the comment, and you're right, businesses and workers do have to pay for health care every month as part of the payroll, and self-employed people also have a mandatory payment every month to the Social Security. In my case, it works out to be around 300 euros a month, but that also includes a pension when I retire. We saw a comment from somebody yesterday in the United States saying that they would prefer a state-run health system rather than a private one because it was very expensive for them in the US. And I think the figures they quoted were between $400 and $700 a month. And I think one of the big differences is that that €300 Euros a month that I pay covers me for everything. It doesn't matter how sick I get, whereas in the States, that might not be the case. But again, I'll open it up to the community. Which health system is better? The one in the US or a state-run universal health system like the one we have here in Spain? Let us know. And finally, one here from Taffa. Hi, Stuart. I have a blast reading the comments on your videos. Please don't delete those comments from ignorantes and conspiracy theorists who leave a gem from time to time. You would spoil my fun. Greetings from Valencia, Spain. Yeah, Taffa, thanks for the comment. And you're right, the comment section on these videos seems to attract some absolutely ridiculous comments. And to be honest, I'm amazed by the amount of people that prefer to ignore what's going on at the moment and believe absolutely stupid conspiracy theories. And the funny thing is that some of them come back day after day after day with these ideas until I ban them. So sorry if I'm spoiling your fun, but I prefer to have a healthy comment section. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in that section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.